Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Miami Heat, Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Heat Beat Podcast. I'm your host, John Carlo Navas, and with me today, we got Reality Check Master Tiffany Meeks. Hey, how you doing? We're we're moving, we're grooving. We are uh, we are in we are approaching February in the calendar of life and in the NBA, the Gregorian and NBA calendar. February, which means All Star, which means deadline, which means teams got to make a decision on who the hell they are. Also joining me today. <laughs> Kenny Spence mm-hmm. of Pregaming, our Miami Heat pregame show. Kenny, how are you, my friend? I'm great. I do want to acknowledge this is like my fourth show in 24 hours. I just want some <laughs> some credit from the audience from from my Heat coach or work ethic. You are uh, you are Kyle Lowry in that stretch where he played a million minutes and uh, there was nobody here. <laughs> So y'all not gonna see Kenny for like two weeks. <laughs> Kenny, 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 I'm gonna be like Spo and give Kenny a a, a, a a suspicious leave of absence. He on the, he on minutes restriction. Yeah, he's on minutes. Yeah, okay, we got we gotta make sure that you're that you're good. Man, let me tell you something, guys. I went for a run yesterday, and I've never felt older. I'm 30 years old. My the like inside of my knee hurt, and I was like, God damn, is this is this it? Like I can't imagine these players. <laughs> damn. Oh yeah, I haven't ran since I was like 22. Jesus Christ! So, yeah, I'm good on that. Tip Congratulations, though. That 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 was a fucking you know that that was a that was a harsh reality I had to face. That I know you gotta get new shoes, G. That no, they're nice. They're the Hoka's. The the Hoka's. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got nice. they're blue. They're nice. Yeah, they're 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 nice light. Yeah, you know it's uh you know that's, we're getting at that age, but. <laughs> <laughs> Bam Adebayo is not at that age. He's a yeah. young man. He's a young, yeah. springy man, and he is, guys. He's a he's the best player, right? I agree with that. I will say, um, we kind of do this every year with Jimmy, also. So we're like, I'm we, saying the we kind of categorize season. him as the regular season version. Yeah, yeah. regular yeah. season, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any question. Bam's the best player this regular season. Tiff, I feel I feel like he's he's earned that at this point. <laughs> No, Bam's the best player, period. Yeah. He's leading them in scoring, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, Jimmy's no slouch. Vic is no slouch, but Bam's the best defender, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, I, I probably should stop there. That's what all a, I need. Tiffany Meeks. <laughs> it is all you need. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what, distilling it for the audience in a way that, you know what's funny, Tiff? That is this is why Reality I, Check Master. No, that's why I love Tiff. Because I'm here looking, I'm like, man, look at his his EPM and the lineup there. And Tiff's like, he he scores, he puts the bas- the ball in the basket the most, and he stops the other team from putting the ball in the basket the most. <laughs> Guys, I, I think that and I'm like, gosh darn it, you're right. <laughs> and sometimes it's that simple. It's that simple. You know, we don't have to overcomplicate something that's mm-hmm. clear to us. When it comes to playoff time, it's a different conversation with the way that perimeter right. players affect games with the way things are officiated <clears throat> and everything mm-hmm. and, and the way that the league has changed. But Bam is not only durable, and, and if, not for a, if not for a freak hand injury, uh, yeah. you know, he, he probably plays. You know, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, you trust to, to be there, and if they rest him, it's because... You know that you know. I think they're trying to, to give the young man some rest, but right. I mean, on both ends of the floor, let's talk about the scoring. And I want to go past he's being aggressive. I think yeah. not that he's a great mid range shooter, Tiff, but he yeah. is such a willing and confident mid range shooter that I believe his percentages mm-hmm. aren't good, but he hits enough of them that it's a problem for other defenses, right. and he has a relentlessness when he's a roller he rolls with purpose and now he has a a legitimate counter move that he's confident in and he's a Mm -hmm. good free throw shooter which by the way he didn't come in the league a good free throw shooter he became a good free throw shooter i think tiff that is the most important development of this season for the heat long term it is the fun thing is even yesterday when he missed a shot I was surprised like because to me once he starts rolling he doesn't miss 
like and, and it doesn't matter. The shot can look awful. He can jump off the wrong leg. It you know, he can fade the wrong way towards the defense. And he it's the confidence because clearly he's worked on his game. Like we'd be remiss to say he has it. Clearly he has. But from last year until now, you could just see that that man knows that he is the guy, that he could be the guy to help bring us to wherever we need to get to. Um, and sometimes confidence outweighs talent. If you if you mm-hmm. feel it that you are that guy, listen, it can it can propel you to do really good things. Um, and and but not to take away from his talent because like you said that that mid range no he's not great but he's really good he's up to forty five percent for mid range which has gone exactly. up in the last weeks that that's getting good now we're talking about mm-hmm. you know he's in the sixty fifth percentile uh, for his peers that that's good mm-hmm. yeah and I I, I do want to give him um, credit for two things before we move on so G you mentioned the free throw shooting I want to acknowledge I was at his first preseason game. I just wanted – I'd seen somebody I really wanted to see him play. Spo didn't play him until, like, the last four minutes. He was trying to make post-ups. Bam shot eight free throws, and he missed eight free throws. Mm. <laughs> and so I wanted to give him credit for approving that year after year. Um, I think – is he 80-something percent from He's free 80% season? this year. Yeah. He was 75 80%. Last that's incredible. Yeah. Second season at 80%. And, He's done it before. Yeah. And the second thing I want to give him credit for, we mentioned the mid-range jumper. I want to acknowledge that over the past, I want to say week, that jumper made him really dominate against matchups that he struggled against in the past because he didn't have it. So yep. Brooke Lopez, yep. Yep. twice against the Bucks, mm-hmm. and the combination of Robert Williams and Grant Williams yep. last night. I think Capella, and so that's as something well. I'm excited to see moving forward. I, I, and I, also I, Capella, not that not that and they Capella. had a, not that they had a good game, but that second half, I, I thought he got going and. Capella is a guy that was really unavailable in that playoff series until the end when he was, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately a little dinged up. And, and I think that, I mean, Capella is kind of the, the archetype, right? Very physical, very mm-hmm. long, very tough, right. you know, very smart player. That's kind of what. So, Kenny, absolutely right. Credit to Bam. Mm-hmm. Uh, people in chat loving it, man. We got uh, Poulter Gosum saying that hook against Tatum was delicious. That sounds like a Siobhanism. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Bond. Uh, she couldn't be here today. I have to start a little earlier, but we'll hopefully we'll get around next week. Uh, they also say Bam show finally showing the offensive leap. We have no outside shooting to balance it out. We're going to get to that later. Um, mm-hmm. Cartiliana says, watch Giannis like Bam in the all-star game. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be mm. great. Oh, man. Hey, they're good friends. Yeah. Bam's friends with everybody, bro. Bam's friends with Tatum. Yeah. He's a, he seems like a super likable dude, which is, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which honestly bodes well for their future of, of hopefully guys kind of come here to play with him because he seems... Uh, you know, not that I am a, a Bill Simmons fan because I'm not. Uh, but I I used to like what he what he used to say. Like guys had a factor of like, do I want to play with that guy? And I think Bam mm-hmm. has that. I think he yeah. looks like very joyful to play with. Loves his teammates. Right. Super unselfish. And, mm-hmm. and I was gonna say, unselfish is the key. Yeah. Yeah, and he, even with the on the floor stuff, I think it's very attractive for any player to not have any worries on defense. Because they know they have a guy like Bam backing them up. Now, that's not to say they should rely on that. You have guys sometimes relying on it too much, and it's, it's a little stressful right. for them. But I think that's very attractive for guys to to have. Right. Man, 25 and, and what was it, 20, 30 and 15? What was it, 25, 15, 30 and 15 last night? Some It was like 30 and 12, 30 and 15. So I, I think he had 16 rebounds or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, just – I was going to buy y'all talk. But, but 30, 30 point, 15. But the best yeah. part about all of that, what did he – tell me what he had at the end of the first half. Oh, I have no idea. That's a great, <laughs> that's that's a great question. I think, he had not, I think he had nine – I think he had nine – I think he had nine points. He struggled. He, he was struggling. I really yeah. think – he struggled. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. he had nine points. So to, so to go from there and to finish with what he finished with, that just shows you the maturation process. That mentally, he went into the locker room, took stock of what was happening, came back mm-hmm. and said, I got this. And, and, and from that wasn't behind, really there before. You know, guys, like from behind, like he he left. Yeah. I yeah. mean, their defense obviously is to, to credit, and that's Oladipo and Bam and, and Highsmith and all those guys. But offensively, I mean, he was really the spearhead of that comeback. And I mean, yeah. really on both ends, if we're being honest. But I mean, yeah. that's mm-hmm. 
that's what franchise players do. That's what Dwayne Wade yeah. used to do. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we're yeah. down? I got this. Oh, a team that we should be beating at home that doesn't have, you know, three of their three of their best players? I, I got this. Or two, whoever the hell was missing. It was uh, yeah. Brown and, and Marcus and I think somebody else. Uh, oh, and, and Al Horford. Um, so, I mean, just the development there, the fact that they're using him differently as well. He's while he's still a, a pick and roll man, he's he's facing up more. He's getting that ball in that mid post. Mm-hmm. He's that mm-hmm. little hook shot has gotten really really nice. Has great yep. touch on it. It's kind of looking for that first step. I think they also don't. I don't think they overcomplicate his life. I think that right. kind of making him kind of handle the ball up top isn't really the solution, which I think they tried it some last season and it just kind of looked awkward. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think getting him the ball in kind of those mid post areas, letting him mm-hmm. work with his jumper, with his first step, with his quickness. And not that Tiff, he's a, he's a big passer this year, but you know right. that he has it in the toolbox. He's just focusing right. on scoring. Right. And, and honestly, that's fine. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not looking at Bam being like I need my six assists. I don't give a damn. I want Bam to keep doing what Bam is doing because if the best thing I saw that he did last night, and I think we we showed that clip on Hangover Time, he made the stop on defense, got the, the ball, took it end to end, and said, "Absolutely not." Yes, I got Tyler on one side. I got Max on the other side. What y'all gonna do is rebound because I'm going to the basket. <laughs> like, and, and sometimes you, because here's the thing. Like, okay, you could spray it out to one of them, but sometimes you need sheer force. Like, you need to put your will on someone. And him making those types of plays that gets the defense on their heels. Like that. Yeah. That's when you say, okay, Bam is coming. Now you don't know what he's going to do because he can pass, as we know, and he can take you off the dribble and get to the basket. I, I love that part of his game now. Um, and my thing is, whether he passes it or he takes the shot, just seeing him get out in the open on the break, I love that. And, and, and credit to Spo also um, for not for, because in previous years he was using Bam obviously more as a hub to go through as far as the playmaking goes, but now he's using him as a play finisher. And G, you've mentioned this before. They're setting the screens lower now. Lower and, and so higher. now he is. Both. Yeah, both. But when they set it lower, it, it gives him an opportunity to be a pop threat because he's popping into areas where he's comfortable shooting. Mm-hmm. And so that opens things up for him. So credit for Spo for recognizing his improvement and kind of getting him involved in that way also. I loved yesterday there was a play. Tiff and I talked about it a little bit after after the Hangover Time episode ended where – uh, it was it was where Hero got the runner, and Bam set the screen probably like three feet above the three point line, and it got Williams in a in a drop. And Williams, you know, if you're a defender, you can't defend that high up because Tyler has mm-hmm. kind of the proven playmaking at this point that Bam is quick enough that once that pass is there, the Celtics are playing at a disadvantage because your biggest guy is out of the picture and their biggest right. guy is mm-hmm. coming downhill. And, you know, so you got to sink and you got to, and you know, Tyler's having a bad shooting night. So, you know, okay, well, we're, we'll, we'll concede the three. And Bam rolls, times a roll well, makes Robert Williams have to really kind of stay around and gives Hero mm-hmm. the lane where he can get to his spot mm-hmm. and, hit a, and hit a tough runner. Uh, and those are the kinds of plays that you're just going to think, oh, wow, nice runner by Hero. That was that was a, a. They have great synergy together. They're developing good. Their two youngest. Their two youngest good players are developing chemistry together, and I just want to credit that guy's IQ because what he sees on the floor, you, we are seeing his mm-hmm. evolution of, hey, let's do this right, or let's run this, or I, yeah. I can do this, and I could start manipulating the floor a little bit so we don't have to be mm-hmm. predictable. Because I think the Heat's biggest right. problem last few years, Tiff and, and Kenny, is their predictability mm-hmm. on offense, and I think he's giving oh, them yeah. a bit of variance. Yeah. It's nice when you have this guy who is a hybrid of sorts because Bam is. Bam yeah. can do a lot of things. Um, and within the last year and a half, all of a sudden, the league realizes we have to guard him. Mm-hmm. Like, we literally have to send a man out to meet him wherever he is. And I think that's one of the best things that ever happened to this team. 
Yeah, and, and what's been happening lately is it's gone from we have to guard him to we have to double him. And now that's opening things up. And it hasn't looked as good as it potentially can because they've right. struggled with shooting. But that's why their shot quality is so good because teams have to account for Bam. And so with that being said, once again, I just want to credit him for his growth because if the shots start falling, this team looks a lot different. And a lot of that is right. because of what Bam is opening up. And Bam's not a shaky passer. Like, and I don't, you know, I, I don't think, I know Embiid's had good passing numbers. What I mean by shaky passers is, can you make a decision on your duress? And I right. think, you mm -hmm. know, everybody's like, Tatum's an improved playmaker. Tatum is an improved playmaker. That is, a, that is yeah, an but... element of, of Jason Tatum's game that he has improved. And last night, Tiff, you saw. But talk about those fourth quarters, though. Yeah. You talk you, about you, he, you, one through three, he's real good. But when it's the fourth quarter and it's two minutes left, he does not handle pressure well with the ball. And that's a tough thing to right. ask because a scorer is used to scoring. And when you're now given yeah. playmaking responsibilities, it's a different element. And you need to see defenses different. And like Jason whipped a pass, like cross his body in the first half to like, I forget, I think Derek White in the corner or something. It was, it was mm -hmm. an incredible pass. And you're just like, man, that's like a, that's one of those like LeBron passes where you're like, damn. <clears throat> and in the fourth quarter, and I think credit to, you know, that, that's kind of a spoism forever. You know, you kind of, you kind of put pressure on guys that you're just like, mm -hmm. I dare you to, I dare you to make a play here. Not because, mm -hmm. and, and, and it came late. Unlike what they did against Atlanta, where I thought they were doubling way too early in the clock. You know, yeah. they came at, at Jason when it was like seven or, or ten or whatever. And at that point, you got to make a quick decision because you might not get the mm -hmm. ball back. And that's what you want. And, you know, right. Hero picked off the pass and game over. Bam doesn't have that. Right. So, Kenny, mm -hmm. to your point about doubling Bam. He sees these, this, he's, he's always seen help coming. I think he's a natural, he's a much more natural passer than a lot of these guys, especially at his mm -hmm. position. And I think doubling him with the way that Jimmy cuts, the way Oladipo cuts, kind of what they have around them, I think that gets a lot more precarious for other teams. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but like I said, it just opens up things. Now, I would like to see more guys cut. Yeah. Take advantage of that, <laughs> especially with the shooting not going. But it's looked good. So well, I, I won't say it looks good, but it's it works out at times. They're just not good. Nobody's good. I mean, even Bam is having his lowest season at the rim since his rookie year. You know, he's he's at sixty six percent, and that's just not. You know, they're just not good finishing, and and part of that is you know the shooting teams are just helping and sinking in the paint. I mean, I think you saw, mm -hmm. I think the Oklahoma City game was the most extreme version of that where they just had right. nobody outside. Right. Yeah. So, you know. And I think, and if you look at the, the way the team is, is constructed, they don't have a lot of guys who can even cut to the basket. Like, you know, right. not, not trying to be like, you know, not trying to be like, bad mouth in the players but like realistically you see the same guys that cut to the basket mm -hmm. um Vic, jimmy. Vic, jimmy um sometimes max tyler on occasion max, yeah, max sometimes and i was gonna say tyler on occasion max and then and hamish if, if, and hamish those are those five guys will try to get mm -hmm. in there but it's not a lot know, it, it's not a no lot. it's not a lot yeah it's not a lot but the, but if i can name them <laughs> yes, yeah. that's not. We you know. we we should and, and it's not it's not a single anyone out, but I definitely think we should see a lot more of that from Caleb. I think with him being probably the I think that's most an player injury. Outside of him. I think he's. Hurt. I don't think I don't think physically he can. Yeah, I think I think he's hurt. I yeah, not right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something. Think, there's something off. Right, you, Tiff, you see it, right? Yep. Yeah, I see it too. Yeah, definitely. He's he's injured. Is not, he went when he went for a dunk the other night. That is routine. You know, he always somehow gets someone to fall for that baseline fake and mm -hmm. he goes baseline and then he gets the dunk. He did it the other night and he, you know, he got filed. He got filed, but it wasn't a hard file and his his arm didn't even get above the rim. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. have the lift at all. Yeah. There's definitely something that's that's not I wonder, right. I'm not a doctor. I, I'm curious if the Achilles is acting up again. I know that he's been dinged with other stuff this season. So uh, shout out to, by the way, Eric the Great. Resubscribed, twenty eight months. That, that's a fucking day one right there. That's a day one. You the real MVP. He's a real MVP. 
Oh, I yeah, asked. So, so, yeah, Ryan's Pereira pointed out. I said, "Happy 28th." I thought it was. His, I thought it was Ryan's birthday. <laughs> that he turned 28th. He's like, "No, man, it's it's Eric's 28th month." <laughs> Eric's the king. We love you. Thank you for supporting us always, and everybody in chat who's always here, having a good time with us. Um, I I think Bam's case. I think Bam is a for sure all star. I would be absolutely mm-hmm. stunned if the coaches leave him off. Uh, I understand the voters, you know, not voting him in. The voting is a popularity contest, and right. Bam, Bam right. doesn't have the smexiest game, and he's not scoring thirty three like Embiid. So you know, and I, I get it. I, I think most ballots have Embiid as the center, regardless. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not hurt by mm-hmm. that. But I think the coaches are going to recognize Bam and what he's yeah. done. Coaches love that shit. They love the defense, and he's, yeah. he's played. And and Kenny, we talked about this. You know, you look at the kind of the guys who are available. I know Frankie and I talked about this too. There's a lot of guys that are at the same game amount as Jimmy and Bam. It's been a weird season and nobody has really mm-hmm. like been super durable except for like freaking Jokic who like never misses a game. Um, it's crazy. So I, I think, I think, I think he's for sure. And I do you guys, I don't guys, you don't see a way that he doesn't get in. Right. You yeah, know, I, I, I think, think uh, yeah. yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he's, he's still leading the league in points in the paint. If I'm not mistaken, or he's definitely high up there. Um, just especially remember, you gotta remember yesterday's game was on national TV. And so that's also a huge push from to put up 30 and 15. Thank you for pointing that out. National TV. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm I would be shocked if he's not a lock. I will say Cleveland has what were was winning a ton, and people do really like Jared Allen, but I don't think he should be over Bam for sure. No way. And I love Jared Allen, but and, and they play yeah. they play Cleveland. They play Cleveland Ooh. next week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They play him on Tuesday. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a national TV game or not, but and they have they have, by the way, when Bam has that block on Tatum, which great defense by Hamish to, to kind of force him into Bam. Mm-hmm. Uh when Bam has that block on Tatum at the end of that game and then goes coast to coast with the dunk, that's the kind of moment that sticks with somebody that mm-hmm. when you think yeah. about a guy's depoy candidacy, that's the kind of shit you think of. Like you think of the guy that is changing the outcome of games, right? Not in a like, yeah. Oh, look at his, uh, look at his VORP, you know, when he's on versus <laughs> in a way that you can see and understand not to, everybody knows I love stats and I love, but, when you see mm-hmm. it tangibly, you're like, right. oh, that's what that guy does. That changes things. Gee, look who look who the closing five was. Do yeah, you was, recall who closed the game? It was Oladipo, Bam, uh, nope, no, Hamish. It no, it wasn't. It wasn't Oladipo. Oh, it was Tyler. No, it was not. Tyler, Hamish. Let me tell you who, who closed with Bam. This is how you know how good he is. It was Tyler. It was Gabe. Yes. It was Max and Hamish with Bam. That's You're right. who closed. You're right. That's who closed. That he had them working on a string. Mm-hmm. Like there was the comeback with that unit. And you stay and sorry, but you stay with that unit. That's the unit yeah. that, that brought you back. That's who you stay with. Mm-hmm. And Spo did the right thing. Look, Cal put the yeah. sweater back on. Cal put the hoodie back on. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah, that should be like coaching one on one. Like for anybody out there who doesn't really understand it, any any time a team leads a comeback and it's on that run, you don't mess that up. By well, especially when out. they're all young. You just, you, yeah, you go with yeah. it. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah, you, you you go with it. You go with it. And they've so. had like a bunch of days off. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you could. And Bam played the whole fourth quarter, which yep. I Tiff, I actually want to ask you this as somebody who's mm-hmm. who's played at a high level before. I sometimes want them to play Bam the whole fourth quarter. And then I'm like, that's probably not good in the long term, but sometimes they need it. And I guess if you need that enough, you're not really a good team, so don't even waste your breath. I just feel like sometimes they should play him the whole fourth quarter. Right. I think that um, it's interesting because this is the type of team where it's like sometimes you want him to have a break, sometimes you like let him play. But because there's so many injuries, that's why we see the fluctuation with numbers and all those things. I think that he looks healthy now. You know, there was a mm-hmm. point where he was dinged up. There was the wrist or the hand or whatever. Um, he looks healthy. And le- to be realistic, like, if they're going to make a push to get anywhere between, you know, four, five, or six and to stay there, 
he's got to start playing heavy minutes. Mm -hmm. Because it's either him or Jimmy. Somebody is going to have to play heavy minutes. Um, And I think the way that Jimmy approaches the regular season, considering the way his body is and all the miles and everything, I think it's got to be Bam. Yeah, and the way Jimmy plays in general, it's just it's a exactly. lot of contact. With reckless and, yeah, abandon. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't sleepwalk. Yeah, so it's gonna have to be bad. He can't sleepwalk his way to his stats. Like no. you know, no. D Wade could like, you know, not pay attention and and, and walk into twenty two points and five right. assists and five mm-hmm. rebounds, bro. Jimmy to do that, that's a fucking labor, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. he's getting to the line, he's beating yeah. guys up, he's getting beat up. You don't want that <laughs> right. a whole, whole bunch of regular sweat. season. Sweat. Right. <laughs> I, but I think Bam's gonna have he's he's you know, he's gonna have to play heavy minutes. Um but I think it's who you who you keep him out there with, which will also help. Um that closing unit last night, are they the greatest closing unit? No. <laughs> But all those guys are familiar with Bam. And mm-hmm. I think that helped. They've all played some time with Bam. Um, so you could see he was out there directing traffic. He had them where he wanted them to be on the court. Um, and, and so the chemistry was there, and it, and it looked good. So I think that, like, you just keep putting players out there with him that he's comfortable with, and and, and you let him rock. And those guys, and the one thing I love, though, that I think we don't talk about enough with the guards, they're all getting him the ball. Yeah. Like they are all, any guard that comes on the court, they're looking for Bam. And I think that that right there in itself is what will hopefully kind of propel them into the playoffs. Like, you keep feeding him, and he's feeling good. This, these are the types of games that he's capable of. I agree. Yeah, I, I I would like for especially in the playoffs, I would like to see Bam continue to be the primary option, and then let Jimmy be Jimmy when it's time for him to be Jimmy. But I think right now, from what Bam's showing us this season, I think it should be set in stone that he's the main guy. He's the guy. I think in crunch time, or you know, I, I think you want kind of Jimmy running some offense, and I think mm-hmm. I think really Jimmy's strength, and and this shows up in a playoff series more than anything. He he's the guy on the team that has the best mismatch mismatch hunt mm-hmm. ability, and I and mm-hmm. I think not only does that help your offense and help you find a weak spot, but that 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 makes guys unplayable. And we've mm-hmm. seen Jimmy play guys off the floor in, in almost every playoff series that we've seen, and that's huge because there are some guys that are a bit of a pain in your ass on the other end, mm-hmm. and if if Jimmy can delete them, that they cease being a pain in the ass. Right. You know. Um, so, you know, that, that's, I will say that about, about Jimmy, uh, chat's asking about your timeline. I have no idea. <laughs> y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, I don't even, in my mind, I'm prepared to never see your again. I, I'm, like, I'm, I, a chef. I'm like, there. It, it, I'm, I mean, I hate saying it, but it's almost like all these things need to happen for the heat to take a look at the landscape mm-hmm. because you had all these guys. Is there a way that all these guys were really going to play? Like, no. No. So, you know, and as much as I wanted to see some Yurt Bam action this year, it wasn't meant to be. You know, it wasn't meant to be. And I think that, like, at some point, what is is this Yurt's, like, is he up for a new contract next season? I believe he's yeah. signed for another. Isn't he signed for another year? Didn't they just sign him? I don't know. I can check. Like, that would be good information. I, I think they did it two years last year. Was so that would be good information to have. If he's due for a new contract, he gone. Yeah. So Omer, like, you're like, seven. Yeah, and I, I do want to acknowledge, acknowledge also, uh, well, last we've heard, they said he might be back by the end of the season, but I don't think it's a good idea to try to implement him at the end of the season after he hasn't played. He has a qualifying so, no, offer. not at that point. No, no. He can take the qualifying no. offer next year, and then he's an, a restricted free agent in 2023. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of, kind of a classic, you know. Yeah, but if he comes back at the end of the season, I would not integrate him back into the lineup at all. No, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Like I, be, he, there's too much of an adjustment for him to make. Like, yeah. Well, it's not even him. It's too much for yeah, the team, adjustment yeah. for the uh, yeah for the other players to make at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, I think uh, somebody, you know, we have a good transition in chat. Uh, what fix that? Subscribe to Prime. Subscribe with Prime. 
by the way, if uh, if you want to be subscribed to help support us and to get our emotes and to get no commercials, uh, exclamation point prime in chat to go to Amazon. Your Amazon Prime gives you a free subscription to any Twitch channel. So please use that for us. We love you. Uh, before Am- before Jeff Bezos stops feeling so generous and takes that feature away. So uh, <laughs> get him in while you can, lads. Uh, Brian said he's a ref- he's a restricted free agent if Miami offers him a qualifying offer. So Brian gave Ooh. some context to the year. I, okay, you know what? I think they might though. Like two, just two, because two, I, two, Devin's something. not coming back. We that's very clear. And I think Orlando Robinson he shows some promise, but he may need a little more time to develop. That's so I think does. they'll. Yeah, so I think I think they'll bring Yurt back like for another. I don't want to say tryout or test run, but just to see what he has next season. I gotta be honest with you, Tiff, Kenny, I'm in on Lando, and I'd like to see. I what, love Lando. I yeah. want to see what they can do when he's in a training camp with them. Kind of learn the yep. defense. I, I think he. There was a period where he looked a little shaky, and I thought he looked pretty good <laughs> yesterday. And uh, he's a young man who's going to learn. I keep calling right. them young men. Yeah. I feel old, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not against it either, though. But he's young. He's he's young yeah. in age. He's young as far as the NBA experience. I think that, mm-hmm. like, um, I I think for 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 him, he's somebody you keep in your system because you, like G said, yeah. you want him to like have an off season with the team. He also still hasn't fully like developed his grown man body. Right. So. He's going to put on some weight. He's going to put on some muscle. Um, he moves well. He moves yeah, well. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was. He's, he's no pomp and circumstance. He literally just goes out there, does his thing. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's no drama to him. There's no extra weight. There's no thorough guns. There's none of that. <laughs> like, he's just doing his thing. Um, Man checks in, does his job, and checks out. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. I honestly like I'm not. It's funny because I know everybody's going to shoot me down, but like I'm I'm not mad if he's your backup center next year. And you like, know what? I'm, I'm yeah, it's, it's the I'm, other. It's the four spot that I keep focusing mm-hmm. on, because if that's all you can attain, then guess what? I feel like. Keep coaching up Orlando and just this is what you got. You're okay. going to ride with that. I'm yeah, and I, and I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at it either way because I do want to point out also, and me and Frank, me and Frankie have put emphasis on this. I think the thing Orlando has, the team has been missing for some time, very long time, is a combination of size and mobility. And so now, like we've talked about before, there is more scheme versatility with him. They do bring him to the level of the ball on pick and roll at times. It's not just he's not just restricted to a drop. Or and so they he blitz. traps sometimes. They, and so, they don't they so, don't trust him, Kenny yeah. yet. They they Spo doesn't. And they, they do bring him high yeah. to blitz and Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. high to blitz. Not, this, but even still just to be able to do that. Um and this is not to shoot Yurt down, but that's not something you definitely trust you don't trust Yurt in that situation. He's a little they, too slow. They like it. to do that with these backup fives. And, but I just think mm-hmm. to your point, Lando just recovers better. Yeah, he yeah. oh he does. Well, yeah. who did he guard? Um, I think it was like Trey Young. There yeah. was a possession where he got caught out mm-hmm. there, but listen, he got the stop. Mm-hmm. So I, it show it shows you he's mobile, he's smart. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing that he's he he seems intelligent on the court. Like he doesn't em- get beat often. Emergency defending is something that I think is really I think it's really under talked about because mm-hmm. like. You know, not everything's going to go according to plan all the time. And I right. just think that you need guys. PJ was great at that. <clears throat> when the script when the script is out the window, you need a motherfucker that'll make a decision. Yeah. And that's just, I mean, if we're being frank, that's just life. You know what I mean? Like, in every, in every profession, you just right. need somebody there that's like, okay, I'm good with making this choice. And, you know, credit to Lando for that and, and kind of his development. So let's, let's transition real quick. Last thing I'll close up the show with. Kind mm-hmm. of, kind of the deadline, guys. It's uh, we're January twenty fifth. We're, we're close to the trade deadline. Obviously, this team yeah. has things they need to address. I think we're all in agreement that you know something at the four, whether that's a wing or a or, or a tall shooter or whatever, they need something. Uh, shooting would be nice as well, you know, to hopefully kind of put more guys back in place. Hopefully, you know, I, I think 
I think if you're being optimistic, Tiff, the hope is if you huh? get somebody at power forward, it kind of puts everybody back into their natural position and they start playing a right. little better, including guys like right. Max, you know, guys like, you know, those, those shooters and, and, and even even the guards that don't have to rebound as much and, and kind of wear their body. Right. I think that's like the right. optimist's hope. That's like, okay, we right. just get that and then... <laughs> I think for me, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. Like, I don't, I'm not thinking they're out there whale hunting or anything like that. So I think for me, I, I, w- I would put emphasis on trying to find a starting caliber, quote unquote, four. But you need a, who can shoot, who can shoot, mm-hmm. who's decent on defense. Like, I'm not looking for greatness because obviously it may not be out there. But decent on defense, who can shoot, who can pass who has something going on between his head. Like, you you, you got to be able to think the game if you're going to be on this team. Like, you can't just be out there being a knucklehead. Um, yeah. Because here's the thing that I, I I looked at last night. I Like, I love Caleb, and he was giving us he was giving us scoring earlier in the season, and he was giving us a lot of things. But he just can't withstand – what he needs to be at that position. He's not big enough. He's not strong enough. And it seems like it's wearing on him. So you need someone that's big enough, that's strong enough, who can also score. And Mm -hmm. here's the thing about it. If you project what we're getting from players on the bench, for instance, like uh, what is Vic at on the season? He had like 11 points or something like that per game. So he's he's around there, I think. I don't know. What, take a look and see. Yeah, I think right Max on. is at like, yeah, he, had, he had a nice little run that should happen up there. Right. What Max is at like 13. And then if mm-hmm. you've got Gabe, who's anywhere between what, seven to like 12, somewhere in that range. Tiff, very nice. 11.9. <laughs> Boom. So what I'm trying to explain to people who like, actually don't understand that they keep thinking the bench is actually underperforming. They're actually performing pretty well for a bench if you've got three guys who can give you between 10 to 20 points. Let's just say mm-hmm. it. Like, right? You got three. I just named them. Gabe, Vic, Max. Then you got Hamish who could come off the bench. Or Caleb, if Caleb is not dealt somewhere, who can give you something. If you put Put that four in there that can actually score. These bench numbers are actually pretty good. Yeah. Because it and takes I, off a, yeah. it takes off the pressure of I need Gabe and Max to give me 20 points. I shouldn't need mm-hmm. them to give me 20 points. I should be cool with them saying I got 12 respectively. I got 13 respectively. Like that's where you really should be when it comes to your bench. Because you don't yeah. have a, a 20 point score per night on the bench you don't but what you do have is guys who can actually give you between 10 and 15 plus a few rebounds plus some assists and stout defense like that's what you got and honestly if everybody's in position you don't have the worst bench in the league Mm -hmm. but you need a four to put Caleb back where he belongs yeah and I think ideally that is what they will get they will get a starting four um, to put Keller back in this position, and I'll try at least. So I agree with that, and I'm. But yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm getting to. And so I've gotten to a point also, just based on the availability and like that's most fours are like really versatile wings, and that's really valuable in the league. And so I think if they have to settle for this, quote unquote. I think a backup for Caleb would be fine also. Not for Caleb to still – just for Caleb to not have to be power forward full time. He can start those first six minutes at power forward and then Spoke can figure some stuff out, like have him guarding smaller guys and like having – being in a more natural position after that. Could you imagine – I just don't know who's going to be available. Could you imagine right. like Caleb Caleb as a guy in SpongeBob who's like in all the casts and Andy comes in and says, Caleb, I know you wanted someone to play for. I got the next best thing. I got someone to back you up so you can play for it. Yeah, but I just – just <laughs> well, the reason I say that is because if they're not able to get a starting caliber power forward, I think they, they need still shooter. need to address their front court depth. You got to go shooter. I think I – So, think, yeah, so regardless, I think regardless, if, they have to do something about that. You call, you call Utah, you know, I'm not going to lie. I call Sacramento – and I see 
But you know who I'm talking about. My boy Harry B. Oh, no. I don't think they part They're with winning, him. though. I don't know. He's yet. too good. Yeah. He's too Gee, good. I, done. I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Because he's a, he's expiring next season for Sacramento. And I don't know. I don't I don't know if they're gonna want to resign him. Would you do Ola Depot and salary for Harry B? Not that they would do it. Listen, but everyone everyone in chat is telling uh, me to let it go. I can't let it go. He's the one that got away, damn it. You know what? The, I, I want I, you to see their ages. Because I say that I say that because Sacramento can <laughs> I, Sacramento can re-sign Ola Depot, who's younger. And uh, maybe maybe this is stupid. Probably is stupid, but I just really want Harrison Barnes. Um, like Vanderbilt's a name that's floated around. I don't imagine Boston's going to move Grant Williams, although they don't. I don't think they want to pay him. And I don't think they want to pay him. So if you're Miami, obviously you know you have to you have to pick up the phone or at least continue conversations, as Leif has reported over at Five Reasons. I think Vanderbilt's another guy that's been talked about. Bogdanovich is a guy. I just think Miami's going to be outbid for Bogdanovich. Olenek, I like him though. I love him. I, I I like him slotting in at that four spot. I just yeah. I just don't know if you. Yeah, we do, don't have enough. Do you give up a Do you give up a first? I'd give up one first. You give up yeah. one first and what else? And your. What about what if it's one first Dead and man? Jovic? Well, so I'm not gonna the, lie to the, y'all. I'm gonna be honest. I'm out I'm on Jovic. Honest. I'm kind of out. I give up. I give up. If they said you, we could have Bogdanovich. Wait, but is he is he going to be a free agent? No, he's under he's 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 under contract. So he's sure. under contract. Yeah. I'd give up a first in Jovic. They're not going to they're not playing him anyway. I I don't well, like I I don't know about just sitting on just sitting on the player if you're not going to be in the rotation. Like what what's I, the point? Yeah. I think Jovic sees some minutes next season. I do want to see his development here, but I think um I do want to point out the Pistons are just going to sell anyway. And so I don't know if they're going to really care to get Jovic. They may just take Deadman in a pick or something and just wave Deadman. Give him, give like him the that. first Deadman and Yurt. Yeah. They, they're not going to ask for too much. They they know they're not. You, I they, the, they, they, they want a lot. So I'm going to say something I mean, about Bogdanovich. He has an extension for two years going up until 2025 for 20 million and 19 million. Right. So, Tiff making a face. <laughs> Detroit gave him that. I'd do it. So, you need, you, you know, Duncan has to go in that. Yeah. Which, yeah. I don't know if Detroit want, well, I don't I don't see. Okay, they so don't you, want, I don't think they would want Yeah, because really what it is, is like, it's the same money, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but you can get more value. So, okay, so you, you, swap, you swap the contract. So, that's a little not really attractive for Detroit. You give a first, you give Jovic. I'm out at two first. I mean, at two first. Oh, for, I'm not giving it. Yeah, yeah, that's right, ridiculous. And I'm not. And, and I'll be honest. And and I don't know if people will like this. I I'd actually throw in Caleb. I don't hate that. I think Caleb. Because what you do is let's. And then I and then you know who the backup would be Hamish. Yeah. But I throw, I, I, I don't throw hate that. Caleb. I don't hate that. I I'm scared of a physical. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna... Might not pass, but this is a shit deal, by the way. Like for Detroit, they have to get something back, which is like Miami's problem. You know what I mean? And it's like, bro, it's like I know Kenny. I know, I know you love Tyler, but like I was a guy. I was like, fuck, I love Donovan Mitchell, but like, do they want our planner as shit and Tyler Hero? Like, I don't think so. It's like a bunch of <laughs> shitty picks that are fucking twenty years from now, and then a contract that no one wants. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like Cleveland's like, did you like Colin Sexton, who's really good right now, who's way cheaper than Tyler Hero, and a bunch of picks that are really soon? And it's like, damn, shit, that sounds better than what we got. And I, I just worry that they're just going to get outbid. So they got to go like, you know what it is? It's like you can't, you know, you can't ask the nicest, the prettiest, the most handsome person to prom first because you know if, especially if if you're like me you know what i mean like i'm i'm like a i'm like a five or a four i can't i can't go up to like above my weight i gotta go to like you know people in my weight class to ask them you know so they, they gotta start lower they can't waste their time negotiating with bogdanovich for bogdanovich because then all the <laughs> other guys are gonna get are gonna get traded that was a bad it, analogy but that's what happened in all season that was a shitty analogy right 
but here but no but here's the thing like it depends on where they see the team going if Mm -hmm. they feel like bogdanovich or someone of that caliber can help push them past the first round and into the second and possibly a little bit further then go for it what what are we what are we talking about like or do they just think that like let's just tinker and then we'll make changes in the off season. I mean, he's so I think it depends too. on what. Yeah, he huh? is thirty three. He's thirty three. He, yeah, he is thirty three, and I think this is maybe just my preference, but I feel like if they're gonna get anybody, that person should also be able to defend a little better than Bogdanovich does. He's, Especially if you're losing Caleb in the deal, you, you're gonna have to bring some defense. He was back. not he's the five, problem. But, you thought had a really good defense, and he certainly was not the weak point. It was. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. It was. The I think dude. he'd be fine. I actually think because of his build, because of scheme and size, I actually think and size. I think he'd be fine. Um, I just think because of his size and his shooting capability, like he's right there. I don't think. Kelly and if does you think, chat. huh? Chat saying Kelly's what? cheaper and defends better, and I'm like, I don't know, like Kelly. Yeah, I don't know. Who, Kelly does what better? Defense. I'm like, I don't, I don't think you watch much yeah. Bogdanovich. And you, I, I, yeah. I, 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 listen, so, I'm a Kelly fan, but I'm not gonna lie. If we no, don't gotta lie. You know what I mean? I, don't, y'all ain't got to lie, Craig. Y'all ain't got. To we're lie. desperate, but we don't gotta lie. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm kind of on the fence about it because I do think bringing Kelly back in with. Again, the offense isn't good, but they have a lot of capable playmaking. I think bringing Kelly into the fold with that would help some stuff. Right. But if you're looking for size, Kelly gives you size and stature, but not in play. And so I, I don't know if that's really the right. best move. I don't think he plays big either. No, he doesn't. I just think, do, are we winning? Like, what what are we doing? Well, the, are the we funny, just trying? Are we just trying to tidy up the cabinet? Yeah. Or are the we offense to, would be interesting, but it's right. I don't think Kelly's the most. Are you just trying to fuck shit up? Like and this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Go ahead, I, G. And that's why I don't want to move. That's why I'm like very hesitant about moving a pick. I mm. I think that they're at best right now as presently constituted. At best, that means like shit has to go right for them. A second right. round out. You know, they right. need the right matchup I, I in the agree. first round. Maybe a guy, you know, you know, gets a stomach flu and can't play for four games <laughs> or something. And they they ride, you know, some momentum and they win a, a tough fought six or seven game series. And one of those games, some shooter has a good night and the other one, Jimmy fucking grips his way into winning it. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't I don't really see the path for th- contention. They haven't shown you the. I don't know, guys. Have they shown you that they're a team ready to contend? They can't win well, four they fucking games in a row. And, they're they're and, not. They're they're not. But that's why I'm saying, what are the moves for? Are the moves to just pacify the team and say mm-hmm. we brought in new blood, or are you literally looking at the landscape and saying, okay, there's been a lot of injuries. The division is tight. The standings are tight. All we need is to slide up to that fourth spot and we can try to shake things up like so what are, what are you doing because if you told me you brought back i don't know um bogey and bay or this one or like if you're bringing me up m- multiple players then you're telling me you're trying to win right now but mm-hmm. if you just show up at my house with a fucking basket of like Sweet potatoes and Kelly O'Lenny, you just tried to pacify my kind of sweet potatoes. Japanese sweet potatoes, those are good. No. Nah. I never had them. Sweet oh, potatoes that, that are all black lady made <laughs> in the kitchen. Okay. Those sound good. That, those sweet potatoes. And yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, hell yeah, I do. So I do want to point out also though, they they're in a they're in a weird spot also because <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really fucking but, funny. But no, they, they, they're in a weird spot, too. And I, I, I think they understand that current constructed they're not winning a championship. And I think right. with that, they have leaned a little into development, kind of under right under our noses. Um, I understand part of it is injury, but Hayward Hosman has played a ton of minutes this season. They have leaned a lot on Tyler and Bam while also trying to work things out with Jimmy. Um, they've given Kyle less responsibility. 
they'll never punt a season. They'll never give up. They're always going to want a championship. But they also have these young guys that are developing. They have Kyle's going to be a very interesting and very attractive piece in the offseason. So, like I said, they're not going. They're not punting this season. But I also don't think this is the year where, like, you know what, we have to win necessarily. So I, I don't know if they're going to be as willing to part with these first round picks because I just think they kind of know who they are and what's available. They also. are under no grandeur that this team is better than it is. If we know, mm-hmm. listen, if if we see it, Eric Spolstra sees it. And I was tweeting mm-hmm. about this the other day because people were like, man, I hope we lose this game against Boston so that the front office, if it, 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 it makes them aware of the problems. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's a little ridiculous. And and listen, and I don't want to, and I don't want to do that, Kenny, because I, I just think some people don't know. You know, I've had, you know, we've had the fortune of kind of, I've had the fortune of, you know, being in the locker room, covering the team, being around people who know, talking to people who know. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm thankful that I've had that. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of fans, I think that that's a reasonable thing to think because they're not doing anything. And sometimes Pat just sits on his ass. So I, I don't think it's unreasonable for fans to be like, well, what the fuck is wrong with them? Because they keep saying we have enough, we have enough. So if they're the organization is saying something to the public and the fans are taking it at face value, which why wouldn't they? Because, you know, this is, you know they're just taking what the people are telling them. You know, I, I don't I don't blame them for thinking that. But yeah, they are under no grandeur that this team is better than it is. Eric Spolstra, the right. way that they make decisions. It's it's Spo, it's Pat, it's Andy, it's Nick Arison and Mickey, and they all make these decisions together. And Mickey defers to the basketball guys on basketball ops. But these guys make decisions together. And whether that's good or bad because it's too many cooks in the kitchen or whatever, this is not a Pat's asleep at the wheel, you know, or but Andy runs most of the basketball ops. Pat just shows up to fucking meetings and talks to people. Um <laughs> Andy's real the brains of the operation over there. But that's what it is, and and they have been they have been scarred with overvaluing their own guys and cap assets like Duncan, mm-hmm. and I think I they're not going to do the same with Max and Gabe. I think they've learned their lessons with Hassan, with 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 Duncan, and even kind uh, of their, James Johnson. And those are reclamation yeah, yeah. projects. Those aren't their own guys, yeah. right? So they've made these mistakes and they've overvalued these guys, and I think sometimes they get too cute. And trying to be too flexible and try to not they just they get a little too cute for their own good sometimes. And that's kind yeah. of their fault. Last offseason probably was a result of that. None of these guys available was the perfect fit. They were waiting for Durant, blah, blah, blah. They ended up doing nothing and now look, now we're all like complaining all the time. So they know mm-hmm. the problem. And yeah, I think there's explanations as to why they did something not these people are inept. It was they banked on certain things like their like their mm-hmm. homegrown talent developing did not happen. These guys did not get better. They've all regressed or stayed the same or gotten mm-hmm. hurt. And mm-hmm. it all happened at the same time. Bam's the only dude that got Bam and Tyler are the only dudes that have gotten real better. Jimmy is Jimmy. Kyle has fallen mm-hmm. off a cliff. And it's like you just can't plan for all these things to happen. Right. They thought that they were mm-hmm. gonna go in with okay, well. We're a little undersized. Vic is going to come back. He's going to give us some defensive punch. You know, Gabe looked really good. You know, Max is coming into his own. You know, if, if we need to rest Max, we got Duncan who could play some spot minutes here and there. Okay, we're going to have Yurt as a legit backup five. We can kind of move on from Deadman. You know, at least we're going to have some good shootings and we're going to have a decent defense because Bam and Jimmy are excellent. And we're going to kind of have Caleb at the four until we can figure out a solution. Mm-hmm. None of those things happened. And I think they were reasonable things, Tiff, to expect. Right. <clears throat> and it just it just didn't pan out that way. And now they have egg on their face and they're like, well, now now they're in disaster mode. Right, right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. is it re- and the funniest thing is, is it really disaster mode? Like yeah, right now they're, they're, still at they're in the sixth seat. 27 and 22. Right. Um, like, I think it's 16. It's so funny because for for as bad as they've looked, they're still mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. <laughs> they're still hang they're still hanging around. Um so I don't think I don't think this season will be as disastrous as it actually could be. Um mm-hmm. I don't think it'll be as good as we all want it to be, but I think that this is the season as to where they do have to figure out What's the next step with the roster? 
And sometimes yeah. that happens. Like you, sometimes you you're not going to be as good as you are, but it gives you a fair opportunity to stand back and evaluate each person on the roster. Yeah, and and just to kind of close up on the other topic, um, and I'm not here to bash fans. I, I don't have the energy to do all that shit. But I just is we say all this stuff just to kind of say and let the audience know, it's just not that easy. It's re- it's like other teams have to say yes. Um, as far as the off season, I understand the frustration, but Kevin Durant did freeze the whole league. It wasn't just the Heat. Everybody was after him. Nobody could move until they Phoenix. figured out what happened with that. Yeah, so it, it's just it just was what it was. The um the Rudy Gobert price that that raised the stock of picks, and so that hurt the Heat also. It, it's there's a lot of factors that go into it, and so I do understand the frustration because they have spoiled us over the years. With the transactions, with well hunting, they do spew a lot of rhetoric that they probably shouldn't, but kind of have to for PR purposes. As far as there's winning and there's misery and other stuff like that, they say those things because they're supposed to. And by the way, can, and I understand. Yeah, Pat deserves to take shit because he said that, and and that's yeah. something mm-hmm. that Jack Alfonso, former host of the Weird Alf pregame show, I remember we were having a conversation. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "There's winning and there's misery." So, so that's Pat words, not yeah. ours. And he's right. Yeah. And so I I do I I'm I just want to say I understand both sides of it because I'm the person I just don't get frustrated with pretty much anything. I don't care. But I understand both sides of it. It is frustrating to watch, but it is also a very difficult job, especially when you are Pat Rowdy and like teams are, for lack of a better term, kind of afraid of you. <laughs> like if you notice every trade room where people just throw the heat in there because if this player goes to the heat, it's going to really become something. And well, no, so they, they make teams, calls. I don't, I don't want to say that. That's yeah, like, they make calls know, also. These, I mean, this reporting is not, this is not a reporter hedging their bet. It's either, you yeah. know, Pat make, if a GM is saying to a reporter, Oh, the heat are calling, even if the heat aren't calling, it's a good bet to, inc- if you're a reporter to, to mm-hmm. leak the yeah. heat as leverage, because they are historically mm-hmm. aggressive team. Yeah, front and that that leads and, and that that leads me right back to my point. It's not from a lack of trying with the Heat. It's never from a lack of trying, and so I don't blame Pat, Andy, or anybody for when things don't happen. They are on those phones constantly. They deserve some heat. I think that I think we also yeah. should do a good job as kind of media members or media light members, whatever you want to call us. Fanalists, I, I don't know what I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I, I, we're in this weird space. Just understand it. Weird space and technology to kind of understand and digest what's going on because it's not mm-hmm. it's not so black and white. And they also deserve some heat. And and just as you know, Kyle deserves heat, and a, guys deserves heat. And I, mm-hmm. I do think there's right. a there's a nuance to the way that these decisions get made that I think is important. Yeah, right. and, and 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 granted. There are some things they deserve criticism on. There are things they do I don't like. I don't personally love when they re-sign guys strictly for trade purposes. Maybe more teams do that. I don't really pay attention to other They do it the tra- most. You know, I'm not the transaction they guy. They do it the but most. But they, they do it a ton, and they hedge their bets on these guys being good. It, it's, it's a little risky for me, but it also has worked in the past, and so I can't get too mad at it. But that Tiff, is something that frustrates me at times. Tiff, it's because, like, unlike other teams, they don't trade guys a year before they're up for, for mm-hmm. something. So they just say, well, I want to play out the season. I'll sign this guy and then do something with him. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of where they live. And and I mean, and that's the that's the the space that they're living in now. Mm-hmm. All capped you out know? because yeah. I yeah. yeah I think I think I think we all know they weren't meaning for Deadman to finish out the season here. It's not even they, it's, their, their their plan was Yurt and Deadman was a good sizable contract. I think Ola Depot that may have been an for him, but he's outplayed it at this point, I believe. But I think they've made signings. I don't know if this offseason was necessarily about running it back, quote unquote. I think they just thought they were going to be able to trade those these guys a lot easier than they have been. Yeah, and they've been wrong about that before with Dion and and JJ. They mm-hmm. they, they did trade them eventually, but it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, they had mm-hmm. to attach a pick in, in all of that, which has been <laughs> the that pick that they but your boy Tiff Mo when they traded Hassan for <laughs> for redacted and and Mo 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 they sent and this is. <laughs> the most frustrating decision the front office has ever made to me. They sent Harkless and a pick to the Clippers to get rid of Harkless and the Clippers started Harkless. So the yeah. fact that they were, that pick was extorted out of them for a guy that they yep. started. It, it, it just drives me crazy. And that pick got, got sent to the, 
to the to the Thunder for the for Paul George, and that's a clip. That's of the course pick it that did. is. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the pick that is in Oklahoma City that Sam Presti is being an asshole about. That there are protections on that pick that are really the reason why they can't trade future picks. So it's all it's funny how that all works. It's a kind of comfort. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I hate how excited I was about Mo Harkless and Avery Bradley coming to Miami. We all were, Kenny. Well, I wasn't excited about Avery, but I was excited <laughs> who's about we, Mo Who's we all? I, was well, I, I said I. Yeah, I said I. Tiff, I, I told myself. I was myself, like, oh, Avery Bradley's bringing that defense down here. And bro, I, yeah. I did not. You know. I know you know. I, you know, you know I talked myself you. into a, a, Mo Harkless corner shooter. And, and then, then he went to Sacramento and was dunking on people. I was like, all right, man. At tweeting at us. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Dickhead. Okay, last thing I want to say, because people are like, tax, tax. They're, they're talking about the tax. The Heat are going to be a, a tax team because of Jimmy. Regardless. Jimmy Supermax. Mm-hmm. Near Supermax. Brian Goins yeah, near Supermax. me the other day. He's like, well, <laughs> near Supermax, not Supermax. Uh, Jimmy's big fat, con- his big fat Greek contract. Tyler's <laughs> extension. Bam's extension. And whatever's left of Duncan's money. That's going to push you into being a tax team to fill out the rest of the roster. Mm-hmm. There's no way around that. And what happens is if you're a, a tax team, three out of four years or something, or five out of, or three out of five, I don't know the, the exact number, you become a repeater tax team. And what they're trying to avoid, not the luxury tax, although they would like to avoid that too, is the repeater tax that they will not be able to avoid. So by staying right. under the tax now, they can avoid being a repeater tax until the Jimmy Supermax expires, which is... The repeater taxes, I think only the Warriors are the team that have survived the repeater tax because it's just the most, it, it truly deters spending like more than anything. It's so punitive. It's why they amnestied Mike Miller. It, it, it's, you know, because I, I believe Mike Miller's contract was going to cost them three times as much as it was worth. It was something ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of where they go. And I think with that, I think it's a good way uh, to, to end the show. Uh, I'm... Guys, I'm excited for the second half of the season. You know, as Eric Reed says, March is the launching pad for Eric's Spolster team. So <laughs> hopefully we get some fun stuff. Hopefully Bam's an all-star. I personally had Jimmy Butler on my ballot. I hope he is an all-star. I hope Tyler goes to the three-point contest. I hope Hamish goes to the dunk contest. I hope Deadman goes to the <laughs> skills competition or a talent show where he's juggling where he's juggling thermoguns. Uh, I'm, I'm, I hope our heat guys are in all-star weekend showing out and, uh, thank you guys for supporting us. Uh, next week hangover time is against the New York Knicks. So tune in next Thursday, February in February. And you know, if you know how MHB does February, I, I know that you might be excited for what's to come. Uh, and I will, you know, we're off the rest of the week. I'll see you guys mm-hmm. Monday and, uh, or do they play on Sunday? I don't know. Whatever. I'll see you guys uh, next weekday for a show or a pod. Uh, <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>